Hey, do people watch cable access anymore? I hope so, because we're here, I'm Mantus, and this is The Pox Show. Hey, we, we're gonna have a new segment where we like recap all of the weekly struggles uh, that the world is going through. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? We didn't prepare for it at all, uh, so we're just gonna do a quick little intro here and just say, hey. How about this fucking guy? Look at his fat fucking face. I'm not trying to fat shame, but this guy's face is fat. The Chinese Communist Party and the Antifa, it's all this Marxism. It's the same thing. It goes back to the French Revolution, and it's an unbroken chain to the Soviets, the Bolsheviks in 1917, right? To, 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 to the Nazis, to the Soviets later, to the Khmer Rouge, to the, to, to, and to the 1960s. They talk about the hippies and everything like that. That was All that was is guys didn't want to get drafted to go to Vietnam. Let's be brutally frank. You want to talk facts? All the anti-war movement, and you were so concerned about this. You're concerned. Hey, when the draft stopped, the, 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 the marches stopped. This guy's face is fat. Depositions are scheduled this morning for Kosh Patel and for Steve Bannon. Overnight, Bannon's lawyer confirming that his client will refuse to provide testimony. Now, former President Trump has been urging his loyalists to ignore these uh, subpoenas from this committee. Lawmakers, though, say they are prepared to pursue criminal charges for non-compliant witnesses. The yeas are 229, the nays are 202, the resolution is adopted, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. He doesn't suck because his face is fat. That's all I'm saying. It's just that it just happens to be fat and uh, fucking pock-faced, like he's got craters and shit and that giant nose that you get when you drink too much. Behold the mighty voices of my vengeance, smash the stillness of the air and stand as monoliths of wrath upon a plain of writhing serpents. I am become as a monstrous machine of annihilation to the festering fragments of the body of the who else? Who else is stupid? Uh, and an asshole. God, there's so many. This dick bag, this uh, fucking fat fuck. This stupid shithead. The angel of the Lord came and stared to this body and asked me if I would give the eternal yes. I have given the eternal yes. I came as Jonah the water. But they mocked me and they scoffed me. They surrounded me and they looked at me and said, Who is this man? Because man, God was tabernacled in man's seed of men.
welcome to Pox and Friends. I love you guys. Hey everybody, Hail Satan. Uh, thanks for joining us again on, a, on another weekly episode of the Pox Show. Uh, I'm Mantus. Pox is in his spiritual retreat coming up with new tenants for the cult of Pox. And we are back with Lucian Greaves again. Thanks for coming back. We have an ongoing, uh, I don't want to call it a crisis, but uh, our spiritual leader, Pox, has been uh, not MI. I want to say that he's on an extended retreat or sabbatical. And uh, it's possible I'm going to have to take over some of his duties. Like, uh, he's supposed to be writing some tenets for us. And uh, they're just not showing up, uh, I, I feel like, uh, timely enough for some of our uh, our more devout adherents. And, you know, I was wondering if there was, if, if you could help me uh or give me some pointers on uh on writing on writing religious tenets oh yeah 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 absolutely you you just need a pair of dowsing rods oh. and then you uh walk out into the wilderness and they'll direct you to the golden plates upon which tenets are written <laughs> and the tenets kind of, they'll choose you you know mm -hmm. and so you, you you're gonna you're gonna find the the tenets that are right for you you know. So really, so there's like a lot mm -hmm. of like golden plates that are kind of, you know, angelically buried under certain mountains and stuff like that. And, and then I, I just have to find the one that speaks to me. Yeah. Haven't you heard of Mormonism? That's how it, oh, yeah. that's how it gets started. Mormon Jesus. Mormon Jesus. Mormon Jesus. Tonight on Frontline, the search for Satan. from the satanic panic were bullshit all along. If you look up grayfaction.org, that's our site where we talk about the ongoing satanic panic and where some of these conspiracist notions are coming from mm -hmm. and the lingering uh, presence in the mental health uh, profession right. of therapists who still hold to this notion that uh, multiple personality disorder, dissociative identity disorder, caused by satanic ritual abuse and, and right. satanic cult mind control and things like that. You have the whole precursor to QAnon right. still alive within professional mental health organizations that offer continuing education units to professionals who come see lectures about Illuminati mind control and stuff like that. And one of the most respected, I guess, and largest organizations for this is called the International Society for the Study of Trauma and Dissociation. You know, and we profile a lot of their, their speakers, a lot of the pseudoscience they support and things like that. So there's still kind of this, you know, long-standing fringe culture that has injected these terrible ideas into mainstream consciousness. And we're trying to bring that to a halt. Satanic cults. She was so panicked 
that she killed him. What do you think it is about about the about psychology and and you know that that industry, not the industry, but you know the, like treatment programs and things like that 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 are that draw this type of thinking, or that are that that feel like this is the right way to go. Well, there's there's certain you know therapeutic techniques that can be misused, I think, to really create a new reality. And I think when you start going down the route of digging for repressed memories, you know, you really open the door to uh, creating a confabulatory reality. And there's been a lot of research done on the notion of the creation of false memories, whether through hypnosis, sodium amytal interviews, guided imagery sessions and things like that. And this is where people come up with notions regarding alien abduction, you know, right. uh, hypnotists who do past life regression and things like that. And then you have this notion that some traumas are so horrific that the mind can't, can't comprehend them, but their body might store some kind of, uh, some kind of evidence for it, whether there's yeah, like repressed memories, you know, yeah, yeah, re uh, repressed memories or even even a sore back, you know, without other other medical explanation or fibromyalgia, yeah. uh, things like that. So if you start digging for the idea of like, whoa, what, what kind of unconscious trauma do you have that might have led to this? And I mean, you know, that seems to go right into the the whole kind of wellness culture that's even that's even kind of on the left of center area, like that that are popular in like liberal circles. Well. It, the whole landscape changes too when you say that certain types of claims are important to take at face value because people don't lie about them. Right. And it's like, and that that's where they went originally with the satanic panic. Like, you know, early in the 80s, they were saying people don't lie about sexual abuse. And if somebody makes a claim of it, you have to take it at face value. Or the children well, people, don't lie in particular, right? Right, right. It, well, you had those daycare abuse cases where, mm -hmm. you know, the interrogators, well, they were interviewers was what they called them when they were talking to the children. But, um, uh, you know, they were so convinced that these children had been abused that you see these sessions, they weren't ex taking no for an answer. They would hold them in there for like 12 hours, the McMartin preschool case, until these kids started saying like, ah, oh, yeah, I guess... I guess we did, uh, you know, go into tunnels underneath the school and murder giraffes and things like that. Satanic panic. <laughs> it's not a hair dye. Back in the 80s and early 90s, a wave of troubling accusations swept across North America. New and intense scrutiny on the activities of satanic cults. Stories of devil worship and satanic cults corrupting young minds. Unbelievable crime at the hands of satanic cults. There were terrifying tales of secret satanic cults bent on tormenting and corrupting the young. Heavy metal music had hidden satanic messages. Possibly satanic messages on some rock music recordings. And games like Dungeons and Dragons were luring kids to devil worship. And it got even stranger. Allegations of physical and sexual abuse of children at a babysitting service. The dark world of ritualistic child abuse. There's a widely held opinion that what happened at the daycare was the devil's handiwork. Underground networks of Satanists were infiltrating daycares and preschools to physically and sexually abuse children in occult rituals. Much of what fueled the panic was not real. But these claims led to a wave of high-profile criminal trials in the US, Canada, and beyond. The cases often followed a similar pattern. An initial report of physical or sexual abuse at a daycare would snowball, taking on a life of its own. Overzealous interveners Everyone from parents to police to counselors would question children, some as young as two years old, in ways now known to produce false allegations. Children began to talk about animal sacrifices, blood rituals, secret tunnels, even cannibalism. Police would lay charges, prosecutors would take them to court, and the media would report uncritically on what seemed to be a growing threat. 
Authorities search frantically for evidence of an apparent ritual abuse epidemic across North America. Some cases would fall apart at trial or during appeal. Others resulted in wrongful convictions. Many of the accused spent years in prison, while others faced financial ruin and damaged reputations. As it turns out, the satanic panic may have its origins in Canada. When asked about the spark that set off the hellfire, many experts point to this book, Michelle Remembers, published in 1980, written by Canadian psychiatrist Lawrence Pazder and his former patient, Michelle Smith. The book provided a template for the allegations of satanic ritual abuse that followed. Pazder claimed he helped Smith recover repressed memories from her early childhood of a terrifying initiation into a secret cabal of Satanists operating near Victoria, British Columbia. They would put me in cages, they would sacrifice animals, um, they would have a lot of candles and chanting and bizarre things I had never seen. Did people think this was a fantasy, that the, you'd made this all up, it was such hocus pocus that it couldn't possibly have happened? Well, I was one of the first to stand up and start to recount these kinds of things and to bring it um, publicly. There was no evidence or witnesses to Smith's account, yet Pazder presented the book as a true story. The hard evidence is difficult to find because if a child is sacrificed, that child's body isn't going to be left. If it's an orthodox satanic cult, they're going to burn the body and they're going to, to eat it during ceremony, so they'll leave no evidence around. Michelle remembers was also one of the first books to suggest that underground satanic networks were not only real, but were infiltrating communities in an organized effort. Anyone could be a satanist, your next door neighbor, your dentist, or your daycare provider. It was an idea that stuck with many readers. The book is called Michelle Remembers. The book became an overnight sensation, and Pastor and Smith received a lucrative publishing deal, about 1.2 million in today's dollars. It also established Pastor as a sought-after expert on the burgeoning phenomenon of ritual abuse, a term he coined himself. There was even talk of a movie deal with Dustin Hoffman playing Pastor. For the McMartin preschool trial in Manhattan Beach, California, where seven daycare workers were accused of ritually abusing children. Pazder was flown down to be an expert consultant in satanic cults for the prosecution. In another ritual abuse case in Bakersfield, California, Michelle Remembers was used as training material by social workers who believed they had uncovered an extensive satanic pedophile ring. Specialists in satanic ideology were suddenly in high demand as more and more ritual abuse cases went to trial. In Austin, Texas, another self-styled satanic cult expert was used to secure the convictions of daycare owners Dan and Fran Keller, who spent decades in prison before being exonerated. It became increasingly common to see ritual crime training seminars led by psychologists, church groups, and even the police. This is former FBI agent Ken Lanning, who studied the spread of the panic in the 80s. All these people network with each other, and they'd all get together and go to seminars and discussions, and they'd be told this is what Satanists do, and this is how they do it. And so all that is planted through the use of these kinds of techniques, hypnosis and other ways, that cause the spread of this kind of stuff. So many people say, well, you can't identify these cases unless you've been trained to, to learn about them. And some of that training becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. The commercial success of Michelle Remembers inspired dozens of copycat memoirs, which further amplified the perception that satanic ritual abuse was widespread. But there was never any evidence of a satanic conspiracy. In 1994, a psychologist from the University of California researched over 12,000 accusations of ritual abuse, but found no substantiated reports of organized satanic groups who sexually abused children. In later years, as the panic died down, Pazder tried to distance himself from the claims he made in Michelle Remembers. 
I'm not there to believe or not believe, I'm there to try and understand what they're trying to tell me of an experience, whether that has actually happened to them or whether that is their way of trying to express a profound pain that they've experienced. But neither he nor Smith ever publicly renounced the book's allegations. This strange period of moral hysteria serves as a reminder of what can happen when we abandon the pursuit of facts for a more sensational fiction. The question is, have we learned our lesson? I'm Lisa Bryn Rundle, host of Uncover Satanic Panic. You can listen to the series now on the CBC Listen app or wherever you get your podcasts. Is there a well-organized plot an insidious design right now to program and influence the minds of our children towards the occult and witchcraft. Look, here's the thing. For all, for all you Satanists out there, uh, hopefully you're double vaxxed already, but uh, if the booster is available, I suggest getting the booster because that's how you get your third six. Any time where you say that corroboration or skepticism is off the table, you invite the QAnon crowd to come in and say, uh, okay, we have a scenario here where you have Satanists and secret societies, Illuminati, mind control, and, and Democrats running a, a pizzeria pedophile ring and things like that. And well, if you deny it, you're just denying that pedophilia happens, you're denying that abuse happens, right. and, you know, and we've already gotten past this. We've already, we've already set the parameters where none of this can be called into question. So it ends up being a very touchy scenario. You know, you have conspiracists taking advantage of an environment where people think they have a duty to be entirely credulous, right? right? And, and people are, are very hesitant once they start saying, ah, you're, you're questioning, questioning claims of child abuse here. Of saying, like, yeah, but you're attaching it to, you know, everything from alien abduction onto onto all kinds of other things. That's how an organization like the ISSTD has survived. On the surface, they're like, oh well, we just investigate trauma and its effects, you know. But you go to one of their conferences, they're talking about satanic ritual abuse and all kinds of bizarre shit. Believe me, we've been there. You know, great right. faction has sent people to their conferences, and I I honestly think you know that whole seen the ISSTD and things like that have to bear some of the blame for the rise of QAnon today. It seems like places like QAnon, uh, one of their most powerful tools is the rhetorical question, because you can throw the claim into the question and then just, you know, have plausible deniability about whether or not you're even making a claim. Yeah, that that's become a that's become a prevalent internet tactic. You know, people trolling and, and you know, and that's that kind of plays into the whole question of what's appropriate moderation of internet sites now you know the free speech debate has gotten uh, has come back uh, you know in ways that it just didn't even exist like 15 years ago you know and and my feeling is that it's because you know it's not because the idea of free speech is dead it's because the marketplace of ideas has been killed by big tech companies who you know, use algorithms to feed people with only the information they'll want to see and agree with. So you can throw out really stupid ideas and you can throw out complete lies in your political advertising through Facebook and you can target it just to the people who are most suggestible to it. And they're not seeing criticism of this type of thing. Right. You know, they're sheltered from it. And 
by and large, to a larger degree, I think, than anybody realizes, or most of the people who believe this material realize, it's not being submitted to the scrutiny of friends of theirs, relatives, or whomever who disagree with it also. Because, you know, they don't have the same algorithmically curated news feed. Right. So, so they become I really further think, isolated, even from yeah, their own. Yeah, I, I, think, I think all these congressional hearings they do with little fuckerberg and and the rest of them where they talk about well what are you going to do to mitigate this and they're like oh we're going to hire 100 more people to look at posts it's like mm -hmm. you know that's pissing into the ocean what really needs to be killed is the entire business model anyway satanic panic it's been going on for a while you know uh, it's mostly because people are stupid so uh the earth isn't flat and that's provable Pizzagate isn't real. Gamergate isn't real. That was the dumbest shit. <sighs> Good night, everybody, and I hope next week does not suck as bad as this week did. viciously turn on him. That's when we saw the sudden hatred emerge. Even when he won, the cabal still had no idea what he was a part of, and a sophisticated plan was about to unfold against them. Shocked at their loss, they mobilized their full arsenal of intelligence, media, money, and technology to try and take back power. There were people at the top of the DOJ and FBI that put together a plan to frame Trump and have him impeached. This is where we come back to the NSA again.